بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد أيها الأحبة في الله we've reached the 20th or the 19th point or the 20th point in Shar Sunnah by Imam Barbahari rahimahullah ta'ala talking about shifa'a or intercession and this is also from the creed of Ahlul Sunnah and we'll discuss how some of the mukhalifin from Ahlul Bid'ah was Zandaka how they differ with Ahl Sunnah with regards to the concept of Shafa'a or intercession with Allah Azza wa Jal. Qala al-Musannif rahimahullah ta'ala wal iman bi shafa'ati Rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam lil mudhnibin al khati'in fi yawm al qiyamah wa ala sirat wa yakhrijuhum min jawf jahannam وما من نبي إلا وله شفاعة وكذلك الصدقين والشهداء والصالحين ولله بعد ذلك تفضل كثير في من في من يشاء وخروج من النار بعدما بعدما احترقوا وصاروا فهما قال إمام بارباري رحمه الله تعالى he said to have faith in the intercession shafa'a of Allah's Messenger on the day of resurrection for those guilty of sins, those upon the bridge, the sirat, and to cause them to come out from the hellfire. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, ala nabiyyina Muhammad. There is intercession for every prophet, alayhi salatu wa salam, likewise for the truthful, the siddiqeen and the sincere followers, the martyrs, and the pious. After that, Allah bestows His grace abundantly upon those whom He pleases, and people are taken out of the fire after having been burnt and reduced to charcoal. May Allah protect us from the hellfire. Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. And for us to realize its reality, Ya Rabb. Shaykh Salih bin Fawzan, half of Allah Ta'ala, says with regards to the Shafa'i, he said, Ashafa'a aydan min masayla aqeedata muhimma. Muhimma li ennahu qad dalla fi ithbatiha al-nas. Wa ghala fi ithbatiha al-nas. Wa tawasid fiha al-nas. Fa shafa'at yawm al-qiyamat al-nas fiha ala thalatha aqsam. So, Shaykh Salih bin Fawzan, half of Allah Ta'ala, he said, Shafa'a is also, or intercession, is also some one of the masail or, or issues of creed that are very important. And the creed of who? Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah. He said, and this is because many people have become misguided with regards to this issue in affirming this. So, so those who are extreme with regards to this affirmation or there is a group which is extreme and he's going to give this tafsil, he's going to tell us about them very shortly. He said there's a group that's extreme with regards to affirming shifa, And then there's a group which is in the middle with regards to shifa, And of course the first group is those who were totally misguided with regards to Shafa'a or they negate it. So he says that people are on three types with regards to their stance and their aqidah with regards to Shafa'a or intercession. There's a group that is extreme in their affirming it. Hatta talabuha min al amwat wa min al quburi. There's the most extreme group with regards to this. This is very important for us to understand. Is the most extreme group with regards to Shafa'a is those people who affirm it to such an extent that they supplicate or they ask for intercession from the dead. 
and from the graves and from the idols and from the trees and from the rocks. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says fi kitab al-kareem about these people and, and their argument. وَيَعْبُدُونَ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ مَا لَا يَذُرُّهُمْ وَلَا يَنْفَعُهُمْ وَيَقُولُونَ هَؤُلَاءِ شُفَعَاؤُنَا عِنْدَ اللَّهِ That they say or they worship other than Allah those things which cannot harm them nor can they benefit fit them. And they say that those are our intercessors with Allah. Those, those people can provide, provide intercession with us, with Allah. وَعِيَادُ بِاللَّهِ مِنْ كُفْرِ وَالشُّرْكِ وَقَالَ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى فِي كِتَابِ الْكَرِيمِ مِنْ سُرْتُ زَمَرْ قَالْ مَا نَعْبُنُهُمْ إِلَّا لِيُقَرِّبُونَا إِلَى اللَّهِ زُلْفَى Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that we don't worship them. This is the argument of the mushrikeen. We don't worship them except that they bring us closer to Allah. La ilaha illa and subhanaka inni kuntu min al-dhalimeen. Wallahi ya ikhwan, if we look at the arguments of the people of shirk and bid'ah today, bid'ah meaning bid'ah mukaffara, and those people who, who they say, well, we don't worship them. They instead, the difference in their argument is they say it's not worship aslam. They say no, it's not worship. They say we pray to the salihin because they're they're not dead. They're in barzakh. But of course, we don't know the life of barzakh. So this argument is battle, meaning that doesn't give you an excuse to pray to the prophets and the angels and those. Uh, martyrs who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has uh, given the life of Barzakh and the Salihin, those righteous people. You don't know how that life is. We only know from the Nasus, from the Quran and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and what we know from those Nasus is none of the righteous people before us, none of the Prophets, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, or any of the other Prophets called the dead and supplicated to the dead. They supplicated to Allah. Nor did the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala majma'een supplicate to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam after he died alayhi salatu wa They didn't do that. They didn't go to his grave and pray to him and say, Ya Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, intercede for me or help my wife who's barren to have a child or help us to have rain. They didn't do that. We don't have any athar of the salaf. The salaf, salaf as salih We don't have any athar of them of doing this, the shirkiyat. So this is ahla ghulu, the people who are extreme. And so never think that extreme is just those takfiri, those people who, who blow up people and do suicide bombings and, 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 and kill and kidnap and destroy and blow up police checkpoints like they do in Yemen and attack and do suicide bombings even on the Shia. This is evil. And those people are extreme, yes. And uh, Boko Haram, the people kidnapping the little girls in Nigeria. Those people are extremists. But guess who also is extreme in their bid'ah, in their shirk, and their deviance from Islam? Is those extreme Sufis. Those people who say to the people, to the Ammat al-Muslimin, they tell the, the awam, the general Muslims, that it's okay to supplicate to Abdul Qadir Jailani or... Uh, the, the leader of the Tijaniya sect or such and such order or so and so Naqshbandi Sheikh so and so who died 200 years ago or this one or that one or Abdullah Harari or other people who have misguided the Ummah and they will get their jaza in the law for this for misguiding the people with their ghulu with their extremism of worshipping other than Allah, supplicating other than Allah, making tawaf around places where they shouldn't make tawaf around, and sacrificing to other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and seeking intercession by other than Allah, than other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and doing intercession which is bid'ah, bid'ah mukaffara, wa'iyadu billah, min So these people are ahl al They are the people who are extremists. 
who worship trees and supplicate to the trees, seek uh, barakah and blessings from the trees. And why do they do it? They say their argument is 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 uh, is in the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa taala says, "Ma na'buduhum illa li yukarabuna illahi zulfa." We only we only worship. We don't worship them, except that they bring us closer to Allah. Ayla habiti fillah. Let's take a look at one other mas'ala that is just uh, that just. Uh, I'd like to reflect on and mention. Don't become frustrated even though you love those personalities. You love people like Hamza Yusuf. You love people like Nu'man, Ali Khan, and others who some of them, like Hamza and others, they completely, this is a part of their creed, this intercession that they work, their sheikhs and so forth are on this tariqah. Tijani, Tijaniya uh, scholars and others who this is a part of their creed. Don't say, well, his next lectures are so nice. He's so articulate. He's so politically astute. He's so, uh, his Arabic sounds so nice. That's not going to benefit you, Ayla Habitifillah. If he's calling you to other than the Sabila Mu'mineen. And likewise, why do we speak about people like Nu'man and others and Yasir Qadi? Because those people, they work with those extreme Sufis. They don't ever be maruf with Nahin al Munkar. They left that aside. They say, La, we're in America now. We have to bring all the Muslims together regardless of their creed. Regardless if they're Shia and they curse the Sahaba, regardless if they are Kaburiyun and they go around the graves and they supplicate to the graves and they seek intercession from the graves, no, we don't want to ever be Maruf or Nain al Munkar, we don't want to accept them, but we want to upset Ahl Sunnah. We want to speak against Ahlul Sunnah. We don't want to work with Ahlul Sunnah, but instead we will work with anybody else who calls himself Muslim. Regardless of their bid'ah, regardless of this bid'ah mukaffara that they have, we'll work with them. We'll sit at the podium with them. We'll have big conferences with them and we'll have major audiences just to have the numbers. Even if there's no substance in ilm wa fiqh, well Islam. Because you're not calling the Tawheed. If you're not calling the Tawheed, and Tawheed Aslan refutes the Kuburiyun and refutes those people who worship other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Quran. If we're going to prioritize ourselves with the Quran, with what the, prior, with the priority of the Quran, as Nu'man says, and as Nu'man claims, then we'll be forbidding shirk. We'll be one of the first duties we'll do. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Kitab al Kareem, wa ma khalaqtu al jinn wa al insil li abdun. وقال سبحانه وتعالى ولقد بعثنا في كل أمة رسول لنعبد الله واجتنب واجتنب تعبد وقال صلى الله عليه وسلم في حديث معاذ بن جبل رضي الله تعالى عنه مجمعين على صحابة على صحابة الكرام معاذ was on was on a donkey with the Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم and the Prophet عليه الصلاة والسلام said يا معاذ تدري ما حق الله على البادي وما حق البادي على الله do you own Muad do you know the right of Allah upon his slave and the right of the slave upon the law. This is the priority, priority of the Qur'an. Mu'ad said, Allah wa Rasulullah alam. He said, Allah and his messenger know best. The Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, who prioritized our da'wah, let's prioritize what Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasalam prioritized with. He sallallahu alayhi wasalam said, Haqq Allah ali ibadi ma'an in ya'buduhu wa la yushriku bi shayin. Wa haqq Allah ibadi al-an. Allah and la yu'adhima man la yushriku bihi shayin. The Prophet ﷺ prioritized our da'wah again for us, alayhi salatu wasalam, and he made the minhaj for us, or he was upon that minhaj, and this was the minhaj of the NBA, as we mentioned in the other ayat where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَقَدْ بَعَثْنَا فِي كُلِّ أُمِّ تَرْرُسُولِ لِنِعْبُدُ اللَّهُ وَجْتَنِبُ تَعْبُودِ That we sent to every nation a messenger to worship Allah alone and avoid the ta'bood. In that hadith, the Prophet ﷺ told Mu'ad, or asked Mu'ad, do you know the right of Allah? 
over his servants and the right of his servants upon Allah. And he said, Allah and his messenger know best. He said, the right of the servant, or the right of Allah upon his servants is that they worship him and him alone. And the right of the servant upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the rights of the servants upon Allah azza wa jal, and only Allah gives that right, and only Allah can enforce that right, is that they worship that they will not be punished if they do not commit any shirk. Any shirk. If they actualize Tawheed, Tawheed Haqiqi. That's the priority of Islam. That's the priority of the Quran and the Sunnah and the Message of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That's our goal. And when we make Shafa'a intercession from other than Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, that negates that goal. That goes against that goal. And when we work together with those people who negate that goal, how is it that we can be from Ahl Tawheed, the, 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 the ones carrying the flag of Tawheed? We can't. Because we've already watered down and strained the fruits of Tawheed. Watered it down, belittled it, instead of making ta'zim. By being firm upon the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and on the methodology of the Salaf of this Ummah who didn't cooperate with Ahlul Shirk, with Ahlul Kufr, with Ahlul Zandaqa, with Ahlul Bid'ah. They didn't say, well, we have a, a, a general benefit in Dawah, so let's work together with the people of Tasawwuf and the people of this and the people of that. La, Ahlul Sunnah didn't do this. Going back to the point of Shafa Ayyullah Habitatullah, as Sheikh Salam al Fuzan mentioned, there's another group <coughs> that are extreme with regards to Shafa as well. Then there's a group which was extreme with regards to their negation of shafa, of intercession. Like the Mu'tazila and the Khawarij. So the Khawarij and the Mu'tazila, they totally, their extremism is that they totally negate shafa, intercession, for the people who do major sins from amongst the Muslims. Meaning that according to the Quran and the Sunnah, uh, according to the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we have authentic hadith that the people of major sins from amongst the Muslims that they will be receive the intercession of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and will be taken out of the fire. So meaning if someone is from Ahl Tawheed, this is, this is the, one of the shuruq, one of the conditions, is that if a person is a muahid, they die as a Muslim at least, they believe in the pillars of Iman, and they practice the pillars of Islam to a greater or lesser extent, but they have some major sins. They died upon zina and adultery. They died upon fornication and drinking alcohol. They died upon some one of the major sins, whatever it may be. And may Allah forgive us all of our many sins. I mean, you know, Allah, I mean. That the person from the Muahideen who dies upon these major sins, then this individual is mustahek to be taken, mustahek for the fire. I mean, they have a right, you know, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wishes to punish them, and if he wishes to pardon them, he will pardon them subhanahu wa ta'ala. But if they spend time in the fire, as a believer for their major sins, as a purification, then they will be taken out of the fire eventually. So Muslims, people who literally die as a Muslim, you know, not dying, having apostated, having once been a Muslim, or dying upon the major shirk which took them out of the fold of Islam, or, or kufr, or what have you, but someone who dies at least as a Muslim even if they were doing major sins, 
they will not reside in the fire forever. This is the belief of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah. And that is uh, in con contradiction to what the Khawarij and the Mu'tazila believe and the others who follow their methodology. Shafa'a ayyu al fillah. In the khalq ala kismain. Sheikh Salam bin Fuzayn also mentions that shafa'a, intercession, with, within the creation is of two types. Shafa'a hasana wa shafa'a sayyi. Shafa'a hasana, the good type of shafa'a or intercession, is when wahiya umur al hasana al nafia al mubaha. Tatawasid inda men induhu hajat hajat al nas min ajli and yaqdiha lahum. So this is the type of shafa'a, the right, the good type of shafa'a intercession, is when you have something something that's beneficial, in some beneficial thing, which is a permissible thing, permit something that's permissible and beneficial and good. In which someone who has the ability to intercede on your behalf in this thing, that's that's beneficial and good does so on your behalf, on, on, the, on the behalf of the person who is in need. So for example, maybe, uh, maybe there is a group of four people and they're obviously in need of, of, of provisions and sustenance. And someone intercedes on their behalf and asks the wealthy people from the community, this is a type of intercession. So they have now allowed for their affairs or their affairs have been interceded on their behalf. You know, they have a haja, they have a need, and someone is taking the responsibility to carry their needs to those people who are in a bit who have the ability to, to assist them. This is a type of intercession. And for them to ask this person, this living person, to, uh, on their behalf, can you, uh, you know, help our charity? Or can you help us? Or what have you, and, and ask the, the wealthy people from the community to assist us, or what have you. This is a type, this is mubah, this is beneficial, and this is something good. And it doesn't involve compromising the religion, it involves actually propagating the religion and the khayr. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Kitab al Kareem, Min yashfa'a shafa'atin hasanatin yakun, yakun, yakun lahu nasibun minha. That whoever intercedes a righteous intercession, then they will receive a portion from it. Meaning that they have done something good and they will receive good from that as well. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam also said, Alayhi Salatu Wasallam, Ashfa'u tu'jaru wa yaqdi Allah ala lisan Rasulihi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam man yasha, man yasha. The Prophet Alayhi Salatu Wasallam commanded, and remember an amr yufi the wuju, whenever we have a command in the Sharia, you feed the wuju. The asal of that command is that it's an obligation. So here the Prophet ﷺ said, Ishfa'u. Tu'juru. He said, Intercede and you will be rewarded. So meaning to intercede on behalf of someone who has a haju, who has a need. Do, do this for them and you will be rewarded. And that's a command from the Prophet ﷺ. As long as it isn't in Muharram and Muharramat and, and those things which are wicked. That's not the Shafa'a we're talking about. And that brings up the Qism Thani, the second type, which is the Shafa'a Sayyid, the evil type of intercession. And wahiya tawasat fi amur muharrama ka Shafa'a fi isqat al hudud ida wajibat. The second type of Shafa'a here. With the uh, between the creation in this life is the wicked type, and this is where a person seeks 
Hashem seeks the intercession of someone in something haram and eat and wicked. Or uh, through a wicked means. And one of the examples the Sheikh gave is, for example, if someone, which happens, is someone of p position and power or what have you. They intercede on behalf of someone in order to remove the hadood of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Meaning that someone from their family or someone from their tribe or what have you, or someone who's politically, it's politically astute, uh, it's politically expedient to intercede on their behalf. So they say, no, well this person, yes, they killed someone, but we want you, uh, Mr. Judge, or we want you so-and-so to not punish them. And you'll be, you'll receive a greater power, or you'll receive a great amount of wealth, whatever, even if they are rightfully deserving of being punished of the crime that they committed. So this is the wicked type of shafa. And the Prophet والسلام, promised the person who to do who does these things that they will have the curse of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Or another type of evil shafa is, as the Shaykh mentioned, fi akhdi hakuk al akhirin wa itaha li ghayri mustahikiha. So he said also, uh, a type, another example of the wicked type of shafa is to take the rights of someone and give it to the right of someone else who is not deserving of that right. So some sort of cheating or some sort of uh, way in which you compromise the right of someone else and you give that right to someone else on their behalf. One example also might be if you're in the court system. And I've seen this, I've witnessed this with my own eyes. Where one particular individual, an individual was handicapped by the fact that they didn't know the language of this particular, uh, in this country and in this court system. The judge knew the language of the individual being, uh, who was in the court system and had the claims made against him. But the judge refused to speak in that language in order to belittle that person and in order to, to, to work with the other party. And then in his education, uh, education, in his judgment, he gave the right of that particular individual to the other party because the other party had promised him a little bit of money. Or in fact, he had coerced that person into giving money so that the the judgment would be in their favor. So this is an example of taking the right of one and giving it to the other. And this is the evil shafa. May Allah protect us, Ameen. Ayla habati fillah shafa has various types and various shurut or conditions and we'll leave that for the next dars as it is now time the adhan has been called so we will continue our dars until the next time bi idnillah ta'ala we ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with the ilm nafi rasul tayyib wa amin al-mutakabbinan wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam اللهم إني أعوذ بك أن أشرك بك وأن أعلم استغفرك لما العلم ربنا أتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقينا ذاب النار ربنا لا تزد قلوبنا بعد ذديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت وهاب anything I said that was correct was from Allah سبحانه وتعالى anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the Shaytan and may Allah سبحانه وتعالى forgive us of our many sins وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم